Today we're going to do some text to put on a bag and it's called a knockout effect. So first of all I'm going to type my surname, Berry. I'm going to change the font. I'm going to use one of the um, built-in fonts and it's called um, Brussels. I'm going to resize it. I've got a rough idea of the size I want. I want it about 8 inches wide and about 2.5 inches high. I'm working in inches today. As you know, I vary between inches and millimetres, but today it's inches. Okay, now I'm going to type my name. Uh, this is Grand Hotel, this particular font. Now, I didn't like the space between the L and the E, so I typed them separately. There is another way to do this, and I'll show that in another video. So what I'm going to do is just line those two up. Make sure it's sitting where I want it. I'll zoom in a bit so I can see a bit better. Just line up the bottoms and just getting that little bit of the L into the E and merging it. Mm, not quite happy, so I'm just taking it one more step. Control and Z or undo, always a good idea to know how to do that. That's better. Now I wanted to add some hearts off the side and for this I'm going to use a font called I Love Glitter. Now you can get a free version of this from Defont. I have the commercial version from uh, online so uh, I really like it. But if you use the underscore you get hearts. Now I'm going to muck around with the size of this for a minute to see if I like it. The thing with this sort of project is to play until you are happy with what you've got and getting the look that you want. And I did make it bigger, decided I didn't like it that big. So I went back to the original size. Okay, so there we are, back to the original size. And that looks better. I'm happier with that. So what I'm going to do now is I want two of those for each side. So now that I've decided to do it in the normal size font, I'm just going to delete the single one, weld the um, second one with the two, and duplicate it because I'm going to put them either side of my name. So now it's just a matter of lining them up where I want them. Always zoom in to make sure that your overlaps are correct. I'm just going to select the two and align them at the bottom. All looks how I want it to look, so I'm going to select it all and weld it. Okay. Of course you can do this with any fonts that you want. Um, I did try typing my name, Leslie, with the um, I Love Glitter font, but it was just too fine for this small project. It would be good on a wall, but not on this project. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to name my layers, Berry and Leslie, because you know how I like to use my layers. Okay, so I'm just going to place it about where I want it. I'm going to um, make the Berry 8.5, uh, sorry, the Leslie 8.5 wide. And then I'm just going to have a look now and see if it's looking like I want it to look like. Oh, that's what I had to undo. I didn't put um, maintain the aspect ratio, so it didn't quite look like I wanted it to. Okay, now I've centered that. Now, it's pretty much looking fairly good. I'm going to create an offset line, an outward offset line, and I'm going to do it at 0.1 of an inch. Okay, now I'm going to color these layers just so I can see what it's going to look like. So the berry's red. The Leslie is yellow and the offset I'm going to make black because that's the area that's going to be cut out in the end. So there we go. So I'm just going to send the I think I'm going to send the Leslie to the front. No, nope, I'm going to turn it off. I turned Leslie off so I've just got the two layers active. I'm going to combine them and I'm going to click divide. So it just takes out that shape from the berry. Now you can see I've got a couple of pieces there, I'm not happy with it. This can take a bit of fiddling, but it's worth the effort to get it to look like you want it to look like. 
I tried moving it a little bit to the side. I still got left with a couple of pieces. Um, so I just played around with it until I was happy with it. Although in the end, I'm going to go in and change the size because it just kept leaving little bits and ragged bits. I just, I wasn't happy with the look. So what I'm going to do is going to delete that piece. Oh no, sorry, I moved it up first. I really did try several things before I gave up and resized it. So again, highlight, divide. Tried it down, tried it up. I wasn't really liking anything. But as I said, this is the time to play with it. Now, as it happens, I forgot to turn the Leslie on when I was moving it around, so I centered it first. So I just highlighted Leslie and the um, offset and centered them uh, vertically and horizontally just so I had them in the right place. And you want to make sure you do that before you um, actually... I'm sending the, the offset to the back so I can just see if I'm happy with that placement. Okay, turn off the Leslie. Oops except I turned off the shape, didn't I? But there we go, turn off the Leslie, highlight the two, and divide again. Still not happy. It can get fiddly, but it's worth all the effort you put into it at this stage. Okay. So. Here we go again, playing with it. And I decided to delete it in the end. Turn on the Leslie highlight the Leslie and do an offset and this time I did it at 0 0.12. Wouldn't have thought it'd make much difference but it did. So sometimes it's something like that you need to do. So I'm going to color that shape just so I know what color it is. I've turned off the Leslie and now I'm going to divide. Still little bits there I'm not completely happy with. So I'm going to take it up a bit. To try and eliminate those little bits. Before I do that. So hit divide. Much happier with that. It's a couple little bits there that I could weed. But in the end they didn't come through because they were too small anyway. But before I actually finally cut it out. I just need to make sure that my Leslie is lined up. Ah, perfect. Perfect. That's exactly the look I was looking for. Okay, so we're going to our layers. Okay, because I haven't lined up the actual Leslie text with the offset, I just need to do that. I just highlight the two, the offset and the Leslie, center horizontally and vertically again. Send the offset to the back. Just making sure I'm happy with all the layout. Turn off the Leslie. Okay, now highlight the berry and the offset and divide. Okay. It's ready to go. So now I can put the Leslie, turn the Leslie back on. And we can do something about getting this ready to cut. Okay. First of all, I'm going to move. I've renamed my other shape Berry. Uh, because it lost its name when I did the divide. I'm going to bring in a couple of little squares. 
This is to help me line up both of these um, so that they are perfectly aligned when I adhere it to the fabric. I'm cutting this in a um, HTV to add to denim. So I'm just putting a little square either side. I'm going to line the tops of those so they're in, on the same level. And I'm, going, I'm not going to put them in a layer. I'm just going to leave them by themselves because I want it to cut with both things. Now I'm just going to move all of it up and over a little bit. I decided to move the, the left one in a little bit. So, rename the shapes as guides. Guide 1 and Guide 2. Okay, so now I've turned off the Leslie and I'm going to put a weeding box around it. Now I've just drawn a box, a, um, a rectangle. So now with using my drawing tool, which is my favourite thing, to make things easier to weed, I add extra cut lines. So I'm zooming in so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to draw down around the letters. Just, this is purely and simply to make it easier to weed. It has no other purpose. So instead of having to pull the whole thing off, I can pull it off in little bits. You may prefer to pull the whole thing off. It's entirely up to you. I just find it a bit easier. I'm just going to take one right along the middle of it as well. Just avoiding any... I felt I was a bit close there, so in a minute I'm just going to move that up. Just a fraction. Okay, now I'm highlighting all the lines and the berry. And I'm grouping that. I'm avoiding the guides. I want them to stay separate. So I'm grouping that and I'm calling it berry. Okay. Oops, and I forgot to add the outside square in. So I'm just going to select it and drop it into that group. So now I'm going to turn on Leslie. Here we go. I'm leaving the little guide boxes exactly where they were. Just lining it up again to make sure it's where it should be. Okay, so I'll turn off Berry. Just hide the layer more than anything. Okay, so I'm just left with Leslie and the two guidelines. Again, I'm going to put a rectangle around it. This can be much smaller. And again, I'm just going to put some... If I wasn't wanting the guidelines, I could make this even smaller, but I do want those two guide boxes to help me align. So I'm just adding some extra lines to make it a bit easier to weed. Okay, now, highlighting all those shapes. The outside box and the Leslie and grouping that and I'm going to call that Leslie. Turn Leslie off and you can see I've just left with the two guidelines, uh, two guide boxes. So leaving the guides on, now everything is switched on, you can see the whole thing. Okay, just going to move it up a little bit on the mat to send to my machine. Okay, I need to um, flip it because this is going to be HTV and you always need to flip before you cut HTV. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it as a working file, um, which if you watch some of my videos, you know that I do all the time because it maintains the groups and their names and their colors and everything else. If I export it as an FCM, it will not it will maintain the group, but not the name of it, and any colours will disappear. Okay, so I'm going to turn off Leslie, leave Berry and the two guidelines, and send that to my machine. It's telling me it's taking out those little bits, which is fine. I wanted them out anyway. And it's not sending the hidden objects either. Turn off the Berry, turn on Leslie layer, and transfer that to my machine, and then I can cut that. So the process is a bit fiddly, but worth the effort to get a finished project.
Okay, this is going on a bag, so I've probably marked out where I want it to go. But I've marked the middle, and I am going to use my placement guide to just make sure that I get it right where I want it. And I'm lining that up with that thing. Now, let's just put that under there. So roughly is about there where I want it, but I'm just going to make sure that's where it should be. And I'll line the ruler up with my middle lines. Just make sure that's straight. It's up a bit on that side. What I'm doing is lining the tops of the lines up there. So what I'm going to do is move the guide up a little bit and just put the opening on there. At the same time, making sure I've got it straight. Okay, that looks right. Now, I'm going to try and avoid um, doing my little squares, but if I do stick them down, applying heat from behind will take them off. So just, um, I've set my uh, Easy Press to 130 degrees for 30 seconds. This is denim, um, and it's glitter vinyl, so that should be about right. Let's give it a couple more seconds. Yep, it's stuck down. Now, I just want to, but of course my um, little squares haven't. So let's get the other half. Oops. Now, what I'm going to do is, just carefully take them off. has stuck down a little bit but I'm not worried about that at this stage. Now I have moved the gold squares, the squares to the front and I'm going to take them off in a sec but what I want to do is match my two little squares. Now. There we go, perfectly placed. Now, this one's not stuck down, so I'm going to take it off so I don't have to worry about removing it later. I'll just have a look at this one. That one's half on and half off, so I just pull it off. Careful not to move anything while I'm at it. I'm going to use the um, Teflon sheet. Now, the gold squares are on top of the um, backing sheets, so they won't adhere. It's a bit tricky, but it makes it very easy to line things up. Again, I'm giving it about 30 seconds. I'm moving it because it's a bit longer. I may go just a few seconds longer. Okay, let's just give it a few more seconds, up and down. Okay. Nope, hasn't stuck. Uh, I haven't obviously given it enough, so this time I'm just going to put it there and leave it for 30 seconds. And then move it along. 
This is a um, trial and error thing. The guide says 30 seconds for the metallic vinyl as well as the glitter. Might take a little bit longer because I've got the Teflon sheet on there. You could of course adhere your two layers together before you put them on your fabric. Uh, but you need to make sure that anywhere where there's um, vinyl going down there's an, that it's not going to stick to the plastic so you have to do a lot of cutting out. Going this end, that stuck this end. Okay, so it should be stuck the other. Oh, it's not stuck the other end. This end, not quite stuck. Okay, I'm going to give it 40 seconds this time. Oh, helps me go up, not down. I might give it a bit of pressure because the glitter stands up higher than the um, foil vinyl. Good thing about the heat press with this stand is underneath doesn't get hot. The reason I'm adhering the vinyl before I piece the bag together is because I'm going to line it with um, a um, any uh, stable uh, stabilizer. Can't think what it's called, um, which, which is like a foam, and it will be much harder to put the vinyl on after. So easier to go now. I'll just press that down again. Oh, it's coming off all right now, so. The Teflon sheet will protect it, so you can't really overcook it. You can if you haven't got it covered. Though. Okay. Oops. It still hasn't stuck that end. I'm just going to leave it there for a bit. Leave it to cool a bit before I try and take it off. It looks gorgeous though. It's still a bit hot, so. Mixtures of vinyl do make it a little bit harder. If you're cutting a piece where you've got, say the Leslie was going up there and the berry down here, you can still use the square principle and line them up and press them all in one go. Because they're not overlapping. It's when they're overlapping you need to be careful. Nope, still not down. I think I'm going to turn the temperature up to 140. As soon as it gets hot, we'll have another go. 130 is probably fine straight onto it, but because I've got the um, Teflon sheet over it. Oh, temperature didn't, I guess it is going up. Okay, 140 now, let's go. I actually put on 145. Applying a bit of pressure. This may be easier with a heat press, but I've never tried one and I didn't have the space for one, so the easy press was the go for me. Okay, 
move to the other end. I've also pressed the denim before, trying to apply it so that it's a nice smooth surface. slightly and hopefully this time we've got it down. Yeah, I just needed that little bit more pressure. Just a little bit of that last heart not gone down so give him just a bit more. There we go. Looks great. Let's see if we can need to zoom in a bit. No, you can see it pretty well there, but I will zoom in a bit. Whoops, wrong way. There you go. It looks fabulous. Just what I wanted for the bag that I'm making.